What's going on guys? Welcome to part 10 of our machine learning with scikit-learn and Python and a whole bunch of other things actually. Anyway, uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is um, actually labeling our data. So like I was saying, and you've probably seen now, the most uh, intensive part of machine learning is just getting the data and structuring the data, normalizing the data, which we still have yet to do because we only have one feature. So we don't really need to normalize it too much. Um, but uh, all of those things just take up so much time. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and label this data. And this labeling will, will ring true no matter how many features we have. The first thing I want to go ahead and show is, um, you know, performance-wise, um, kind of an interesting concept really that um, I find is, you know, can we prove or disprove the idea of momentum investing even? Um, and so a lot of people support momentum investing and in, investing in, and historically I haven't, uh, but my findings here are actually quite interesting. So anyways, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to, we've got difference and then now we're going to add one new thing to our data frame and that's going to be uh, status. And at every step of the way, we're going to ask, um, what is the status? Is it outperform or underperform uh, compared to the starting value? Um, so, so we've got status here. And, and eventually what we could do is we could store the previous value. And then we could say from you know the last data point we had, did they perform or out, underperform or outperform and all of this. And then you'll see in a little bit here, we're going to have a kind of a, another dichotomy that will happen. And, and that's, you know, should we consider at every step of the way outperforming and underperforming or like just in general, where did they end up? Um, so more, a lot more on that later. Um, but uh, so for now we've got status, okay. <clears throat> and now what we do is we're gonna come down to where we're calculating percentage change, which is right here. And let's add a couple more variables. First of all, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just define difference. So difference where we kind of had hard coded it um, so we're going to uh, do that and then we'll just call this difference here, difference. And then we'll come over here, difference equals that. And then we're also going to um, do the following. We're going to say if uh, difference is greater than zero, this means our status is out, actually this needs to be in quotes, uh, outperform. Um, and then else status equals under per form. Okay, so uh, again, difference is just the percentage change for the stock minus percentage change of the S&P 500. If that's greater than zero, it means it has outperformed. If it's less than zero, uh, it means that it's underperformed. So now we're gonna add one more down here now, and we do status, and status is equivalent to status. Easy enough. Now we're gonna come down to where we're graphing this stuff. And basically, we really need to add that legend probably last, that's kind of inefficient. But anyways, uh, within this try and accept here, um, we're just gonna do the following. So before we actually plot, um, basically right here, we're going to ask the following question. We're gonna say if plot underscore uh, DF <clears throat> status and then we're going to ask the, the negative first if element which means the last element if that equals under perf under perform let's learn to type here uh, we're going to say color equals R for red else color equals G for green we plot we're saying label equals each uh, ticker, and then we're gonna go ahead and comma, and we're gonna say color equals color. Easy enough. Um, so that will plot it. And again, this will be plotting the lines based on the final value. Um, it's quite difficult. Well, actually, I mean, it's a little more difficult um, to change the line's color like midline. It is possible to do, um, and maybe I'll show that down the road, but. Uh, for now, we're not going to deal with that, and let's just let's just look real quickly at a stock um, now. Wait for it. Okay, so so we get this you know large plot here, 
Um, and we can see, okay, there's Apple just doing his thing, outperforming like crazy. Let's go ahead and just zoom in and kind of ignore Apple for now. And so here we can kind of see that, you know, once out, once an outperformer, almost always an outperformer. But some of these companies did kind of underperform for a little bit. And then as time went on, they moved on to outperform. Um, and then some of these just right at the last second outperform. Um, but we can see some of the companies that initially strongly outperformed died, died back down. And that, and that was probably um, people who maybe over leveraged, stuff like that. Um, anyway, but for the most part, I mean, just looking at this, we can kind of see that for the most part, outperformers outperform and underperformers underperform. Um, but w later on, we will, um, we're going to do both most likely because I'm very curious to see which is the superior method. Um, but we will, for, at first, we'll just start with our ending value, right? Um, or actually, hmm. I'm not really sure. I, I think we'll, we'll end up doing both. I'm not really sure how I'm going to start it off either. But with underperform and overperform, basically we've now labeled this company as either a buy or a sell. And so we've got our label, and that can be translated as a zero or a one. And so now our data is labeled, and we need to learn um, how we can now take this data and we can do machine learning on this data. And um, so we're going to save that now for the not next video. Um, but in the next video will actually, um, I believe, be covering actual, you know, machine learning in an actual example. So anyways, very exciting. Stay tuned for that. Um, I realize we actually already did cover a machine learning example. But now with the knowledge you have, you have your own data. The previous machine learning example, you didn't have your own data. So it's a little harder. There's a bit of a disconnect there as far as what all the data, you know, parts are. Uh, so in this next video, you'll uh, at least see linear uh, SVC um, and an example of how to do that. So anyways, uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please do feel free to leave them below. Um, otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.